Well, good afternoon. This is the third time I try to get online, I tell you. Anything that wants to try to stop me wants to try, but I have succeeded in getting the volume on correctly. So, good afternoon, everybody. This is Arlene from Adelante with Arlene. Some of you who have never tuned into it might uh, be saying, Oh, that's freestyle singer Arlene. Yeah, that's me too. <laughs> years I have had um, a show called Adelante with Arlene. I had put it at a pause probably for eight years. I, I stopped it. And you can find it on YouTube and you will be able to see and hear uh, videos that I had done in the past videos that I had some old performances as well as some of the stuff I do now which is um, worship the Lord and sing I was singing in various churches um, also you will also have there some of my inspirational messages a lot which I did when I was single and then I have a few which um, share with you my recent uh, journey and my health journey and the things that I have gone through from freestyle to faith as you can see, for those that have followed me before, my surroundings have changed a bit. We moved and rented now a house where I am hooking up a room. I'm hooking up a room and I'm excited and I'm gonna make this the music room, the Adelante with Arlene room. And in the back you will see different uh, displays of art. You're gonna see some of my husband's graffiti art and you will see this is my, um, something from my past as you can see. That's me in the middle there, <laughs> right there with all that hair. So for those of you who are tuning in now, I forgot to get my water. <laughs> um, I'm giving you a few minutes to head on. I had some issues. I have to get like a table, a desk and all that. So if you only knew what I have going on here, it's a little crazy. So I'm trying to situate myself the best. So if I turn to this side, it's because I'm looking at the computer. So it's kind of hard to see who is online or not. But I see you, Kevin, that I do see. So welcome, welcome to Adelante with Arlene. And anybody else who is um, coming on now, I'll give you a moment. Um, Adriana, <laughs> hello, this is my family, my cousin from Puerto Rico. God bless you. Um, I have a show called Adelante with Arlene. I'll repeat that a few times for those of you who haven't seen it on YouTube. It is on YouTube. And um, it was quite popular for the first years that I did it when there was no um, Facebook Live, there was no YouTube Live. And I used to spend a lot of time producing them myself, editing them myself. During my single times, I have some interviews on some artists and some Christian artists as well um, from New York there as well as from Florida. So please subscribe to my YouTube under Adelante with Arlene, which means going forward with Arlene. I want to give some people a chance to get on. I know a lot of people right now, um, unfortunately, are not working. Um, such as my husband and half of the world or the entire world. There are so many people being um, let go of work for the moment. Um, I assure you that we are actually sharing the same emotions and the same experiences in regards to uh, what's going on all over the world. Now, this morning, uh, I got awoken at 5 in the, in the morning, and I say awoken, that was definitely by the Lord because I uh, do not get up at five o'clock in the morning. I usually get up like about 8.30 or nine. So as I realized being a Christian for a few years that if I was up and awake at five, then there had to be a reason that my Lord wanted to get my attention. So I prayed and I asked God to lead me and guide me. And I started writing a lot on Facebook. If you go on my timeline, you will read uh, 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 recurring statements that I continue to make this morning from five o'clock to probably six o'clock in the morning and it was about uh, fear not being an option if you see me turn to the left is because I'm looking at the computer um, I have to get my desk set up it's not set up yet and therefore I will be uh, moving around <clears throat> a lot so I'm gonna give a moment and a time for more people hello Royce um, Damaris, hello, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I'm gonna give a moment because I always rush into the message and I don't wait. Um, I'm hoping you're all feeling better and I hope that anything I share today might encourage you. I have some notes, I will be looking all around. Um, I will be going left and right. Why? Because I don't have my desk hooked up yet, but you know what? If you saw the layout I have now, you'd laugh. <laughs> 
I literally have like something holding the computer here and something holding the camera here and my papers all here you see and the Bible over there um, there was just I never really go on uh, live until I feel led by God to do so and what I mean by that not to sound so super spiritual is basically that there's a lot I can say and if I go on sometimes and it's just for a minute to say hi that's different but it's very rare that I do that I do more of when I feel impressed by God because I get a burden for you all. Now you got to remember, I don't know all of you personally. So for me to get a burden to pray or speak to you and to be bold about it definitely doesn't come from me. Although I am a, a person that is a talker, during my times of leather and lace with the group that I was started with Freestyle, many years ago in 1984 till I went solo, I was literally the shy one of the group. While when I'd go up there and grab the mic and sing Tender Heart and uh, let it all out and let it rip, <laughs> I still was really not the one who spoke to y'all um, on a more consistent basis. Well, prior at that time I was extremely young. I am 56, I was 19 years old when I started in the business. And as a result, I, um, I was very timid. I didn't know the Lord. Um, I didn't have much to say, really honestly, as God has deposited in me now. And the Word of God says in the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy uh, 1.17, and it says that we, don't, we weren't given the spirit of fear or timidity. We were given the spirit of love, of power, of sound mind. So today, when I got awoken, my eyes opened because the Lord opened them, at 5 a.m., I kept feeling in my spirit, and I want you to go later on to my timeline, and I continuously kept posting that fear, fear is not an option. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a choice. It's a choice, but it's not an option. And God kept saying fear is not an option. Fear is not an option. And that's something that I'm going to be repeating as I continue to speak today. And again, bear with me. I will be looking in the Bible. I will be flowing with the Spirit. I feel very heavy right now. I feel a bit emotional. And I know that my emotions don't come on what I'm feeling right now. Um, on a natural basis, it's something that I feel when God touches me to slow down and... Try not to rush through what he wants me to say. So let me start by reading a psalm that last night my husband read out loud for both of us before we went to sleep. And it's Psalm 16. It says, Save me, O God, because I have come to you for refuge. I said to him, You are my Lord. I have no other help but yours. I want the company of the godly men and women in that land. They are the true nobility. Those choosing other gods shall all be filled with sorrow. I will not offer the sacrifices they do or even speak the names of their gods. Let me stop there. In the Bible is God with little g. Okay. Which we already know means other gods. But God, other gods doesn't just mean to us in our life right now such as, you know, statues or just other gods that people consider God when for us and it's Jesus Christ is our is our Lord. It's really speaking about anything that we make greater than the Lord God Almighty. Anything that we idolize, that's the word. Anything that we idolize becomes a God to us. So anything that we allow to enter in our lives and give power to our lives becomes a God in our lives. Whether it's fear, which will just torment us and control us, whether it's money, self-sufficiency, our ego, anything that we put before our Lord Jesus Christ becomes a God, an idol. So it says again, I want the company of the godly men and women in the land. They are true of true nobility. Those choosing other gods shall all be filled with sorrow. I will not offer the sacrifices they do or even speak of the names of their gods. The Lord himself is my inheritance. 
my prize. He is my food, my drink, my highest joy. He guards all that is mine, and he sees that I am given pleasant brooks and meadows as my share. What a wonderful inheritance. I will bless the Lord who counsels me. He gives me the wisdom in the night. He tells me what to do. That's how I got online. He told me what to do. He said, fear is not an option. I'm going to repeat it again. Fear is not an option. He tells me what to do. I am always thinking of the Lord. And because he is so near, I never need to stumble or fall. Heart, body, and soul are filled with joy, for you will never leave me among the dead. You will not allow your beloved one to rot in the grave. You have let me, um, you have let me experience the joys of life and the exquisite pleasures of your own eternal presence. That's Psalm 16, and I read it in, uh, I think, the Living Bible Translation. There are other translations, and I wish I could flip through, but as a result of me not having, um, like I said, what I need, the desk. I read that one to you. It is the Word of God. Go back and read it. So, let me break down a little bit. You say, save me. There's a plea, there's a cry that we all have to be saved by God and to be supplied by God. I think the problem a lot of us have, all of us, it's pretty much a, of our natural inclination, is to fear because we have learned to be self-sufficient, independent, you know, um, take care of what we need to take care of. That's all quite normal. That is what we are meant to, to be, to do. But we're meant to also be interdependent, not independent of community. So when something of this nature and magnitude, which has happened for the first time for many of us in our lives, such as, you know, the virus, um, it causes us, some of us, to get completely out of control. And that's what fear does. Because when we allow fear to enter, it paralyzes, it, it wreaks havoc, it tries to control our mind and our ever-being so that we do not function the way God has made us to function. When we fear we have to we have to have first received it see we weren't born with it we weren't born with fear we there's an outside element that has influenced us which is operating from the pit of hell in order to put us in bondage in order to bring us to disarray in order to separate us and i don't mean about the social distancing i mean separate us from what is right um, we all get, we all want to grab everything. We want to grab all the waters. We want to grab all the paper, um, you know, the toiletries and all the above. We're still putting our trust in, um, in those things instead of God. We don't share with other people. We become quite selfish because fear has caused us to become erratic. We're terrorized. We become uh, paralyzed, as I meant. Uh, as I mentioned, in the Webster Dictionary, it says that fear is involuntary. It is subject to power. You have to first receive it. You have the, um, the power inside of you if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have the power to say no to fear. Again, I say fear is not an option. Fear is not an option. Fear contaminates faith. It contaminates faith. God is about us having a sound mind, a sound mind. And when you see these videos of people going absolutely bonkers crazy, fighting with each other, doing insane, crazy, inhumane things to other humans as a result of their fear, we know that fear has already grabbed them and terrorized them. It is like a really crazy, bad movie out there that is coming to life you can say oh my god i saw that in that movie oh i saw that in that movie absolutely because fear contaminated their faith they had no faith the faith that they have would be in self in their jobs in what they feel they can do what they feel they can obtain but sooner or later those things no matter what will run out 
But when you walk with the Lord, he will always provide. In the Bible, there's a story. I, I can't remember exactly where. It's in the Gospels. And I know that one of the disciples went to visit the house of this lady and her son. And the lady had nothing left but just a little bit of oil. And she said she was had nothing more so she can make what she needed with this little bread and this little oil. And she was going to eat it with her son and die. But faith through that disciple said to her, do this. In other words, she shared it. And as a result, because of it, God blessed her with abundance. She never, ever had to lack for ever again. I'm giving you the short term of that story, but it's truth. So many times we think that the Bible is full of these little tales and little, I don't know, little myth stories or little fairy tales. Before I came to Christ, I believed that there was Jesus. I believed there was the Father, and I believed there is the Holy Spirit. But in the Catholic religion, um, I did all my sacraments and all that I did. But I didn't understand really much about, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I truly didn't understand a lot about um, the things that the Word of God said, because I never studied the Word, on uh, what God uh, says um, should be godly character, uh, his promises to us, all this kind of stuff. I, I had no idea. So I lived my life as many of us have day to day, uh, depending upon self or depending upon parent. If I was young and I had, you know, mother or father, dependent upon job, dependent upon music and all these things became my little G's, my little gods. Really, it was when I hit a bottom in my life and a lot of these other things that I depended upon, these little G's, these little gods in my life. Um, were not able to take care of me or fulfilled in me, um, I then ended up at a really bad bottom and felt quite empty and had no identity because I identified with all these other things. Um, there was these expectations, these things I felt entitled to, all these things I was accustomed to that when it ran out, what now? So... When I hit that bottom, I went down a spiral. You can hear it on YouTube from uh, Freestyle to Faith, where I speak a little about my journey. A uh, book will speak more and more in depth about my journey. And as a result, um, I spiraled into fear. I spiraled into despair back then. I spiraled into a identity crisis. And all these things only brought me to just continue to look for what I call those little G's to fulfill me, to become my source. So today I'm speaking again about fear. Fear is not an option. And that's what the Holy Spirit put in my heart this morning. When we allow fear, which is something from the outside, we, could, we can make that even a God. It becomes so ingrained in us that we allow it a power to, ha to have a power in our lives that it shouldn't have because we do have the control to not let the fear contaminate our faith. You see, Satan operates in fear. He operates in fear. He dominates and brings bondage to us in fear. In fear, we act out irrationally. In fear, we make decisions that are not wise. In fear, we get our immune system to be stressed and we get sick. In fear, we open ourselves to being paralyzed, we, to be terrorized, to be tormented. There are many times in my life, even as a Christian, I have been afflicted. You'll hear my health journey. You can go again on, on with Arlene on YouTube and hear this. I was afflicted with different diseases, uh, one after the other. And it was my eyes, or it was this, or it was that. You'll hear all about it. It was a neurological thing on my face. Oh my God, like insanity. Fear was entering. I felt a change and a shift when panic set in of something that was un unheard of. It wasn't even something that was even hereditary or something that it just came and hurt me. You might ask, where was God in all this? Well, God gave me strength. God gave me victory. 
when I went to the doctors, I was able to nip it and see what it was so that I can use what God, yes, has provided the scientific mind in order to be able to take the necessary medication to help me. Do I believe that God cannot heal me? Well, I believe he can. Absolutely. So why doesn't he? Look, God is God. My faith says when I take that medication that one day I will no longer need that medication and still I am dependent upon him to keep me, not really the medication. He can use what he wants to use to take away that pain to be able to speak to you. So I gave in to what the Holy Spirit told me, but not to fear. But for a while, it was grabbing me. It was tormenting me. And I say again to you, fear is not an option. I say it because the Holy Spirit told me to tell you to tell myself that because the journey that I've gone through thus far has proven that he has seen me through, has proven and I felt that darkness before, that despair before, that place where you don't understand why something is happening. But I never took, off, took my eyes off of God. And it is God who has strengthened me. It is God who can strengthen you. Sometimes when we are in need, we look onto God and we almost use him as if though he's a genie for a moment. We feel that giving our hearts to the Lord, we have such a misconception, is about um, rules and regulations. Honestly speaking, when you fall in love with the Lord and you read his word and it, it becomes your food a day at a time and you fellowship with other believers, you're aware of your flaws. You're aware that they are flaw and they have flaws and you have flaws. But you see beyond that, you see their heart for Christ. You uphold and encourage one another. You pray for one another. You might not always agree because there are different views and things I've gone through with some people might think that um, all therapy is not a, a tool for a Christian. Well, yes, it is. Or this might not be or that might not be. We, we may have those kind of views. But the one thing we stand on and know is the Lord Jesus Christ being our Lord and Savior. We know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We know what the Word says. So that's, there's opinions and views, and then there's what the Word of God says. And I know that God uses different things to bring people nearer to Him. So in this season that we are all going through, this is not just a city. This is global. What we are going through we can all stand together, not in fear, because fear is not an option. It is not an option, not for someone who wants to succeed, to break through. There needs to be the faith. Let me get on the Bible here, and I'm going to look up a scripture. I put a little sticky pad to try to help me. Um, let's see. And good afternoon to everybody who's joining in right now. I want to read from the book of Romans. So I'm going to look that up right now. Romans 8.15. And I'll probably sing a little song too. I have no idea what song. Whatever God puts in my heart. Um, sometimes I seriously don't even remember words. But I just praise them and praise them. And by the way guys, I used to always be like that. No matter how young I was, sometimes I just forgot my lyrics. <laughs> but one thing I don't forget is that when you have a heart for the Lord, the song just becomes spontaneous. Spontaneous worship has become the best thing I can possibly say has really filled my heart. So I'm going to Romans 8.15. And what I'm going to continue to say over and over, and if you're there watching right now, which I know a lot of you are, I want you to say these words out loud and I wish I can hear you. If anything, type them in so I can see you're hearing them. You have to say, fear is not an option. Type that. Type that. I want to see that on my comments. Fear is not an option. That's what I'm going to continue to say to you today. The Lord woke me up this morning at 5 a.m. For those joining me now, Marie, John, Lizette, fear is not an option. He woke me up this morning, and I don't get up at that time. And I knew that God was just saying, you know, he wanted my attention. So I just start praising him. And as a result, that is what started coming to my heart. Amen, Lizette. Fear is not an option. Let's spread.
around. Fear is not an option. John, type it. Type it because you confess it and it starts taking root inside of you. And it, it, it's because fear paralyzes faith. And what? We're locked up now, most, most of us. Some of us can't even go outside. What do you have to lose? Just believe in the one that has been trying to get our attention for a very long time and unite in one accord and say fear is not an option. So in Romans 8, 15, and my lighting is not even that good here. <laughs> the blood of Christ, amen. Okay. It says here, and we, and so we should not be like, this is a really good version. This is like the easy living Bible version. It says, and we, so we should not be like crying, fearful slaves, but we should behave like God's very own children adopted into the bosom of his family and calling to him, Father, Father, and some versions says, Abba. For his Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we really are God's children. We are really God's children. And since we are his children, we will share his treasures. God gives to his son, Jesus, is now ours too. But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in the suffering. Yet we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will give us later. For all creation is waiting patiently, hopefully, for that future day. Fear is not an option. Fear is, amen, John. Amen, John. Amen. Fear keeps us in bondage. Fear has to be received by us. It comes from the outside. It's an outside source. It's an outside influence. It's an outside power. Don't let it in. It is not in our character to be fearful. We have been conditioned to think so. We are human. We live in this natural environment. Again, because we made all these things with a little g, our gods. We made ourselves so self-sufficient that we forgot to have our dependency in the Lord Jesus. And I speak of self because when I go into those stores and people get too close to me, I'm not going to lie. I say the same thing. I'm like, oh God, I don't want these people around me, blah, 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 blah. Oh God, oh God, they're too near. Honestly speaking, again, fear is not an option. I can take protocol, do what I must do. Absolutely. Be mindful of others. Absolutely. Absolutely. But to be obsessing, as I in my nature to do and watch too much of those news and some of it is real news some of it is fake news and do that it's just making us sick but to sit and vast yourself in the pleasures of the Lord and allow him to give you the peace because he's in control there's victory in that my brothers and sisters I assure you God made us to have a sound mind a sound mind in 2nd Timothy 1:17. The word of God says, I'm going to go there now. I, I'm, I'm so happy. Whoever's joining, you're welcome, John. Lucille, hello. Let Type in there. Fear is not an option because that is the, the, the word God gave me this morning. Fear is not an option. So 2117, let me see what it says here, this version. All righty, 666, find the right one. Yeah, 2 Timothy 1.17. In fact, when he came to Rome, he searched every other front. Um, that's not the one. Well, anyway, I know it by heart. God does not give us a spirit of fear. I said that one before. He gives us a, uh, uh, um, he gives us a spirit of love, power, and sound mind. Sound mind and self-control. That's another translation. Self-control, self-control, self-control. Many years ago... Um, when I think I realized as a Christian that I would get really fearful of so many things. What started happening was that as I meditated on those fearful things, whatever the phobias might be that some of us naturally have inclinations to, I don't know why, to allow these things in, what happened was they, the more we think about them, they somehow manifest themselves in our lives. And when I wasn't in the Lord, they manifested themselves 
in a way that paralyzed uh, me, made me feel anxious, made me have panic attacks and all that stuff. And I say this before the Lord because there was a difference when I was uh, in the Lord then and how I react now than when I wasn't in the Lord. So I remember going to the doctor and um, they called, they said it was panic attacks and I was always, I don't know, I just felt like not at rest, like fearful. And I didn't, I kind of knew it, but I didn't know, I felt like it was normal. I, I just didn't understand where it was coming from. So when I came to the Lord, I noticed it. And now I learned more of what the Word of God says about not being anxious about anything, but that in Him, uh, with thanksgiving, to present my request to Him, and that the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard my heart in my mind in Christ Jesus. Now, I tell you this, and I know it well, like I just memorized it, because I did. Because I had to grab a hold of the word, okay? And I had to grab a hold, as my husband telling me, get out! I had to grab a hold of the word and meditate on it to take away that stinking thinking I had from the fearful things and the way that I acted. I lived in New York all my life. Um, yeah, I, had, I was streetwise. We understand. We learn how to do things in a way that um, and, and go about our lives, especially as women, so that we won't put our lives in any um, danger that we think you know we would. We don't. We don't walk around paranoid. But because um, I didn't have the Lord, I did not know how to handle this. These these influences that were hitting me, you know, that became this fear that tormented me, that was giving me panic attacks. Where well, there was the simplest thing, such as uh, having good grades, or or succeeding in something, or or being liked as a freestyle singer, or wanting attention and the accepting to be accepted. All these things take a toll on you, and then you there's like a fear, you know. Even on stage, I loved to sing and I still do, uh, you know, and now you can tell me to sing and I'm going to sing to you. I, I really have changed a lot because of the Lord. And what I say this is that I don't need the applaud of men or women anymore, even though I love my fans. I just need to please my God. So when I worship him, I want to please him. I want to please him with my life. Fear is not an option. Fear will paralyze you from praising. Fear will paralyze you from uh, living an, a healthier life. In the book of Job, uh, chapter 3, Job says, What I always feared happened to me. What I always feared happened to me. That's what I mentioned to you. I said to you that if you meditate on these things that bring you fear and all these other things, it almost it's like has tentacles. It becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now you're walking around a little bit more fearful. Well, you might say to me, I'm not fearful. We all, to some extent or another, have allowed it to come into our lives. And during this moment in time that we're having right now with this big, humongous, humongous, humongous occurrence that's happening worldwide, it's evident that fear has seeped in to a lot of our lives and we have embraced it and we cannot because what guys fear is not an option if you're listening to this later on our replay I do want you to type in fear is not an option because I'm gonna go back and see this again and I'm gonna post it and post it and post it fear brings torment fear tries to control our mind fear tries to oppress us but we are going to have faith we are going to have the faith that moves mountains. We are going to trust, not in the little G gods, but the big G, the G himself, the Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And for whoever doesn't know him, whoever knows him, knows of him, and has not accepted him as Lord and Savior, I urge you to do so today. Because guys, as we can see, tomorrow is not promised to us. The Bible speaks of that. Now, when I used to read that statement, it got me scared. No, it doesn't anymore. Because the truth is, if you put your life in the hands of God, you put your life in the hands of God. You got to trust that whatever happens to you when you're in the hands of God is always going to be the best thing. When you're outside the will of God, when we are not walking with the Lord Jesus, that's when we need to be more fearful. And the reason I say that is because those who are of God, serve God, want to walk with God, even starting today, they hide, like says Psalm 91, under the shadow of the Almighty. They hide 
under the shadow of the Almighty. Let me look at over here that says 1314. Okay, so Isaiah 54, 14, I'm going to read this translation. It says, you will live under government that is just and fair. Your enemies will stay far away. You will live in peace. Terror shall not come near. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You see, again, fear is not an option. Fear, and this talks about being under the covering of the Lord. You know, God, by his mercy, covered me and many of you. Um, when we were not walking with him. I always used to say, I believe in God in my own way. In my own way. Again, in my own way, not knowing his ways. It wasn't until I started feeling this tug, this pull to get to know him better. And again, I testify that on YouTube in the video and also a podcast call from faith, uh, Freestyle to Faith. It wasn't until then that I realized how wrong I was and how my life was grasped by the little G's and by fears and outside influences and all the things and all the stressors of life that were taking havoc on my mind, my body, and my soul. Today I want to remind you, fear is not an option. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. He gives us a spirit of love, peace, and sound mind. So what do I do, Arlene? I hardly have anything to eat. Trust in God, feed on his word, and know that if you give your heart to him, you shall not ever lack anything. And if God forbid the Lord would take us, we know that we're gonna go with him. My thing is people fight about toilet paper, but they should be more afraid about where their soul is going to. When you read the word, it becomes more of a reality. We think that uh, that the dark side is a myth, a Halloween costume, the devil with two horns. We have no idea of how deep and dark and tormenting that other side is described to be in the Bible, where you don't want your soul to be. There is no sin that isn't too great for God to forgive. There isn't anything that we have ever done that God would not forgive if we bow ourselves and humble ourselves to him. We're seeing many celebrities that we didn't expect to be giving their hearts to the Lord and we wait and we see for them to fall on their faces. And we're starting to see, their, we see their flaws all there. We see their flaws. We see how they grow in the Lord. We see how they slip and slide, how they come back. Well, that pretty much is, is pretty much the walk of many of us. As we are giving our life to the Lord, we crucify to self daily. We will make mistakes. But the one thing I tell you, when you love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, when you take in his word and you feed on it, it resounds, it comes back to you. And when you're about to do something that was your old character, the Holy Spirit inside of you will illuminate that place and show you not to go that way or that way, but to go that way towards God. Fear is not an option. Fear is not an option. Fear is not an option. Don't make it an option in your life. Those that serve the Lord, those who seek the Lord, those who desire the protection of the Lord, have to remember this. Those that do serve the Lord and live serving the Lord and wanting, even right now, you say, oh, today is day one, will I be covered? Yes, we live within the shadow of the Almighty, sheltered by the God who is above all gods. This I declare that he alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God. And I am trusting him. For he receives you from every, I mean, he rescues you from every trap and protects you from the fatal plague. He will sh excuse me, shield you with his wings. They will shelter you. His faithful promises are your armor. Now, you don't need to be afraid. Fear is not an option of the dark anymore, nor fear the dangers of the dark anymore, nor fear the dangers of the day, nor dread the plagues of darkness, nor disasters in the morning. 
Listen to this. Though a thousand fall at my side, though 10,000 are dying around me, the evil will not touch me. I will, not, I will see how the wicked are punished. I'm not saying that the ones that are dying are wicked. I'm reading what it says here. Though a thousand fall at my side, though 10,000 are dying around me, evil will not touch me. Evil will not touch me. If you're coming on right now, the Lord woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning and put in my heart, fear is not an option. My name is Arlene from Adelante with Arlene. I have a show on YouTube where I would love for you to subscribe. You will see old performances if you want to see me singing my old freestyle. That's part of my life, part of my journey. You will also see my health journey and also hear some of my videos, one of them entitled From Freestyle to Faith. When the Lord put us upon this in my heart today, I started listening to Clefo Dollar and I started to take some notes and I started to look in the Bible to some scriptures and I wanted to share them with you. I do not want you to receive fear. Do not receive fear, my brother and sister. Do not receive it because fear is not an option. It is not. It is not an option and you can't make it an option. We need to be, even if we have social distancing, we need to still be a community. Get online share with others. I love when the DJs are playing music. Share your worship songs as well. Share your testimony. Speak to another person, whether in public, whether in private. Let's be a community of people. Let's use this venue that the Lord has allowed us from YouTube lives and Facebook lives and chats to not speak uh, about fear, to not speak about politics, to not speak about race, but to be united as one because we are all globally going through it together. Some may be in a worse place than others. Some are feeling sick right now because they might have the virus, but I'm going to pray for them too right now. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, that you woke us up today and were able to click on and listen to this and use this venue in a way to encourage one another. I ask God that you take every thought captive and make it obedient to you and what your word says. I ask, oh God, and I know that your word says that love, your love, love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear fear. You do not give us the spirit of fear. It says it in the Bible. You do not give it. It is not given to us. Fear is not an option. I ask, oh Lord God, that you will give us the peace that surpasses all understanding, which is you, that you will guard our hearts and our minds in you, Lord God. I pray for those that are feeling ill and symptoms of illness, oh God, that they would feel your healing touch upon them right now, that this me, this girl, and all this on the line later on, far away from them, are praying for them, praying for them, that they will survive this. I ask, oh God, for wisdom, wisdom for the president, for the governors, for all those in positions of higher authority, oh Lord God that they will be led correctly by you, that you will impart in them the wisdom, the wisdom, that the beaches here would get stopped and locked up as they should, so this nonsense that they have going on would be eliminated. We pray, O oh Lord Jesus, for the containment under your power of your Holy Spirit of this virus, that because whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven, whatever is loosed on earth, which is your, your glory, will be loosed in heaven. Oh God, I pray for all those that are feeling fearful and I repeat and repeat and repeat. Fear is not an option. Write it down. Write it down. Type it there. Confess it and declare it. We are so quick in cursing when we get upset. We are so quick in saying all the negativity. I know. And all the, oh my God, oh my God, and oh my God, oh yeah, yeah, or whatever, whatever. That is not going to help you. Fear is not an option. Let us speak in faith. Let us move in faith. Let us be a community of people that rise up. When I lived in New York and we went through what we went through in New York with that 9-11, the world, the New York City united. We united, even those outside. So this is global now. Let us unite. Let us put all race, political views and all that aside. And let us stop making fear a G, a big God in our lives. Fear is not an option. Type it in there. Type it in there for Type it and declare it. Let's do this. Type it as many times as you see this today. Just type it. Because I know deep inside, no matter how big and, 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 and much you work out and muscly, you still have fear because you let it come in. Fear is not an option. And I know that the circumstances might be dire. And I know you don't know what tomorrow my promise might bring to you. The Word of God says that. So for today, just live in peace. 
Live in peace. Give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ so that every day after you will have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Knowing that you will never be left alone, you will never be forsaken. During this time, I tell you, if you know an elderly person in your building, if you live in a house, I know New York is more apartments. If that is the case and you know, knock at their door. You don't have to tell them don't open the door only because they, you don't, we don't know what we might be carrying and you know already that they're more susceptible. But be there, be there for them. Tell them you left a bag of food for them. Just, just stay further away so they don't get hurt in any way. But that they may be able to open the door and get some help. There's many people out there that are afraid. Fear is not an option, but you can be the one to make a difference. You could be the one to make those sandwiches and make those little foods for the little children that might not have a meal because they're not in school right now and that was their only meal. Okay, fear is not an option. That's what the God said this morning to me at 5 a.m. 5 a.m., I'm not a 5 a.m.er. Fear is not an option. I want you to type that. Type that in my comments. Fear is not an option. You have to you have to proclaim it. You have to speak it in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Stop letting all these other outside sources influence you. Stop letting them influence you. Use wisdom. Wisdom from above. Yes, the distancing. Absolutely. Absolutely the washing of hands, even when you're in your house. Absolutely. Absolutely. But let's not be a hog. Let's not hoard products that are needed for other people. Pregnant women, children, uh, the lonely, the alone, the single. For goodness sakes, let's be kind to one another. So as I sign off, I pray Again, that the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I pray that if you don't know him today as your Lord and Savior, you say, Lord, Lord, I confess you. I confess you. I want you in my life. I finally get it. I need you. I need you in my life, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Take that dusty Bible that you might have. Open it up. And if you don't have a Bible, there's such a thing called Google and you can go and get the Holy Scriptures there in so many different translations. You can get the Living Bible Translation, which is a little easier than a King James because the English is, is just a little uh, foreign to us at times. This is the Living Bible Translation. Things speak very simple and they're applicable to our lives right now. If you are, if you, it's a topical thing and you want to look up fear, if you want to look up, uh, what do you call it, scriptures on love, scriptures on, on war, whatever it is you want to look up, you just Google scriptures on whatever the topic is and you can meditate on those scriptures. So during this time that you are possibly isolated and out of work like many of us, including my husband, um, take this time to be productive, to feel, feel, feed your soul and do not feed on fear. Okay? So fear is not an option. Type that. Spread this video. Subscribe to my YouTube. God bless you all and I'll probably be going on later on. God bless you. Have a blessed day and remember that the Lord loves you. He died for you and today is the day that he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give your heart to him today. Y sigue adelante. God bless. This is Arlene signing off.